My name is Tony. That is two bike parts. That's toe and knee. And if you didn't get that, well, that's just because you actually have good sense of humor. Um, so when I was uh, in about middle school and high school, I dealt with a lot of depression and anxiety. And I don't know if uh, any of you have experienced this, um, but it's something that's not provable to people, you know? It's something like, the best way I can describe it is like, imagine you have a cold, and people are saying, oh, he doesn't really have that cold. You know, like you'll be sneezing, you have a sore throat, and people are saying, ah, I, don't, I just don't believe it. Because there's no physical symptoms of mental illness, it's not believable. And I think a lot of this uh, was brought on because I was bullied quite a bit and um, put down a lot. And uh, what's really interesting is, is the physical abuse was not, uh, um, it didn't even compare to the verbal. They say um, you beat a dog enough times and the dog starts believing that they did something deserve those beatings. And that's basically how I felt. They say, oh, be yourself. You know, that's a cliche thing to say, be yourself. But being myself never got me anywhere. Not anywhere good anyway. So having a mask was something that came natural to me. And this went on for quite some time. Being myself was non-existent. Um, when I was a sophomore, a lot of you guys are sophomores, I went to a youth group, and they had Eucharistic adoration, what we had last night, the same thing, Jesus present in the Eucharist. And they said, oh yeah, you can sing, singing is praying twice, so you can sing and pray, and that's praying. And I was like, okay. And um, everyone around me when this was going on was singing loudly. And they were, they were saying, uh, they even told me, the leaders told me, oh, yeah, if you extend your hand, that's surrendering to God's will. It's a, it's a form of humbling. And I said, you're crazy. Um, and, and I meant it. And uh, it was just so weird. I looked around and I saw and everyone was singing, and not just singing, like mumbling, but they were singing loud. And it was baffling to me. How could you actually do that? Or, you're making a spectacle of yourself, like, that is so weird. Um, but something also struck me. They had such a freedom about them. In their face, you could see it. It's not something they could really tangible explain, tangibly explain, but they didn't care what others thought of themselves or thought about them. Um, they didn't care. It was a freedom that I really desired to just be. You know, just be. So a few uh, months later, we went on uh, an event called Inspirations uh, at Six Flags, Magic Mountain, and they had Mass and Eucharistic Adoration there. And this is an event, if you haven't heard of it, this is an event like with 3,000, 4,000 uh, youth. So it's a huge thing, and the band is really loud. And the thing about loud thing is, if you were to sing, they couldn't hear you because it's just so loud. So. I took advantage of this, and everyone's eyes was closed, and they were everyone was singing loud in adoration again. So I decided to try this. I was like, let's try this radical idea. Um, and something indescribable happened. A sense of freedom. I don't know if you ever had walls that you built up, maybe it was from a lack of trust or or just because you couldn't, uh, you didn't want to let someone in. But that weight, for me, was unbearable. And to sing out loud was a little brick coming down. A little bit of an insight of just being myself. 
that sense of freedom that I saw in other people's faces, I felt in my heart. And it was indescribable and beautiful. So when I ask you guys to sing, I ask you guys for that freedom. Maybe it's something that, that doesn't apply to you, maybe it is. But I invite you to seek that freedom out if you haven't found it already. Because after those walls are down, the freedom is just so open. I lacked an authentic relationship. Because wearing a mask, you just can't be yourself. How many of you would actually uh, be friends with someone who's fake, right? It's that authentic relationship is what we're called to do, called for. A few weeks ago, I um, I went to a worship session and for the last few months, I've, put, I've dealt with a lot of self-doubt. Like, um, don't believe in myself, you know. There's been so many times where I just keep finding that I'm asking God, why me? Why am I even here? Because I'm worthless. Because I'm worthless. And this thought keeps breaching in my head. Why me? And that as I was asking this in worship, I felt God's heart intertwining with mine. I'm not even just singing his love, I'm singing his whole heart. And however you picture that would feel, it was greater. However great you think God is, it was greater than that. The freedom, it's indescribable. It's indescribable. The sacrifice that we make when we sing and praise God is so appreciated. Because a lot of times we say, I'm not going to do that because I don't want people to hear me. Because I don't want let, to let people in. Because I don't want to buy into this. Because I don't want to sacrifice. But Jesus sacrificed his whole body, mind, and soul. So when I invite you to sing, I invite you for that sacrifice. I invite you to extend that sacrifice. Mind, body, and soul for freedom within self, within depression, anxiety, stress, trials, addictions. You give your whole self and he will give you your heart. He will show his heart to you. So we're going to sing that song one more time. And when we do, I invite you to give your whole heart. Again, it's how he loves.
God that sacrifice. Just become a moment. 